All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. We got a couple of guests with us today. We're going to watch these videos. This one video of this guy breaking down the Kendrick Lamar and uh, Drake and J. Cole beef. So we're going to watch that. We're going to come back and discuss. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page, hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Also, if you want to donate, links in the description. Look, man. All right, so we got Sean P, Rick Shine with us. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get this going. Let's watch this video real quick, and we'll be back. Discuss. Recently, Future and Metro Boomin released their collab album, We Don't Trust You. On that album, there was a song featuring Kendrick Lamar called Like That, where Kendrick took shots at Drake and J. Cole. For many listeners, this was a surprise that Kendrick took shots at these guys, and it took the internet by storm. Everyone was talking about it, and many people were left with questions. Like, why would Kendrick diss Drake? Why would he diss J. Cole? And why would Future, a previous friend of Drake's, let this happen on his album? Well, today, we're gonna check it out. Also, my name is Matty Balls. I'm gonna be releasing a video every single Sunday this year at 12 p.m. CST. So if you like music-related topics like this one, make sure to stick around and please subscribe. Now, let's continue. It all started back in 2011 when Kendrick was coming onto the scene following Section 80. Drake and Kendrick met, Drake had Kendrick feature on Buried Alive, and even invited Kendrick to join him on tour. They also collaborated a few more times as well. But that friendship quickly turned into a bitter rivalry in August of 2013, after Kendrick's verse on Big Sean's song Control came out. We usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Push your team, meet Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler McMiller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now, no verse from you. This verse sent the rap game into shock, and everyone <laughs> thought it was crazy. And most people understood what he was saying that he was cool with all of these people, but that he's also competitive and wants to be the best in the rap game. But good old Drake, who's known for being a tad bit sensitive, seemed to have taken this the wrong way. Drake did a handful of interviews after this, hinting at the fact that the verse hurt their relationship and basically saying that Kendrick did this all just for some brief clout. Drake also said, I didn't really have anything to say about it. It just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. So when that day presents itself, I guess we can revisit the topic, which is funny because everyone is revisiting the topic right now. Anyways, Kendrick pretty quickly dissed Drake back at the BT Awards Cypher when he said, nothing's been the same since they dropped control and tucked a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Drake responded on his song, The Language, and later said that he had to stand his ground, but there weren't any hard feelings. Where are you with, at with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world? Where are you guys at now? Same place. Same place, it's all love from the moment I did the verse to after the verse. By this point, it was clear there was at least some type of animosity between the artists, but not some super intense beef. Over the following years, the two artists would fire shots back and forth at each other. Like when Kendrick said on King Kunta following Drake's ghostwriting allegations, I can dig rapping, but a rapper with a ghostwriter? What the f happened? Drake then responded on the game song 100 saying, I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. In 2017, Kendrick took some pretty direct shots at Drake on the heart part four when he said, Jay-Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. So that means you ain't bigger than rapping. He said this because Drake said he could make more money outside of rap, and his producer also said that they make music in a genre beyond rap. Of course, there's been a handful of more disses and other issues throughout the last decade or so between Kendrick and Drake, but I'm just trying to highlight the important stuff because that would be a very long video. As we know though, Kendrick took a five-year hiatus after 2018, and while he was gone, Drake kept making jabs and references to him. You know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. I'm excited that the decade's about to turn and we're gonna see who can, you know, yeah. who can who can go that extra stretch. A lot of these guys that go away three, four, five years want to chill out and all that shit, that's not me. Drake even took a super direct shot when he said, fake woke, 
fake deep. You ain't no fame before me. Give your ass a little sneak peek. Now you gotta take a back seat. But Kendrick could not keep letting this slide. When Kendrick came back, he released an introspective album and collabed with Baby Keem a few times. But his priority clearly wasn't Drake, other than the smoking on your top five line in Family Ties. But after a while, it seems like Kendrick was fed up with Drake running his mouth, making jabs and subliminals on every other album he released. Do you think he thinks Drake is up there with him? No! Okay. That's what I was no, hell no. Kendrick knew Drake wasn't better than him, and he wanted to make sure Drake knew that too. All of this led to March 22nd of 2024, when Future, Metro Boomin, and Kendrick Lamar released the track like that. When people were listening through Future and Metro Boomin's collab album, We Don't Trust You, they quickly noticed that Kendrick's feature on the song Like That was targeted at Drake. At first, his verse doesn't seem particularly targeted at anyone until he says, F sneak dissin', first person shooter, I hope they came with three switches. He continues later on saying, Motherfuck the big three, it's just big me. I'm really like that and your best work is a light pack. Prince outlive Mike Jack. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines, he gonna see Pet Cemetery. This is a pretty obvious reference to Drake and J. Cole's song, First Person Shooter, where repeatedly on the song, Drake and J. Cole talk about how they are the best. But there is also a line from Cole on First Person Shooter where he says, love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league. Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick have always been viewed as the big three of hip hop in the last decade and a half, but Kendrick came out saying that he's the best. Kendrick also views some of the lines from first person shooter as sneak disses, such as who the goat, who you bitches really rooting for, like a kid that act bad from January to November, it's just you and Cole. So while J. Cole named all three artists in the big three, Drake only named himself and Cole, leaving Kendrick out of the equation. Not only that, but Kendrick targets Drake in particular saying that Drake's best work is a light pack, then compares him and Drake to Michael Jackson and Prince, since on First Person Shooter, Drake pointed out how he tied up Michael Jackson for number one songs. Prince outlived Mike Jack, which damn, is, is a cold bar, not only because you're, you're literally talking about how long both of them lived on this planet, but obviously Kendrick is uh, getting a bit uh, conceptual here and making a comparison. You're pop, you're mainstream, you're lowest common denominator, you are a agreeable me i'm prince i'm the experimenter i'm the innovator i'm the one who's daring i am the mold that other people are copying i'm the one who's ahead of the curve then kendrick directly references drake's album for all the dogs saying they are getting buried like the stephen king book pet cemetery with shots this direct taken at drake the rest of the verse makes a lot more sense when Kendrick says lines like, these people talking out of their necks, say it's a lot of goofies with a check, and people clicking up but cannot be legit. Even lines like DOT, the money, power, respect, the last one is better, can be interpreted in a way that shows Kendrick elevating himself above Drake. Because Kendrick has that respect from OG rappers, from pure rap fans, from the guys who really love the art that Drake never really had or never really has gotten now drake has gotten respect from the ogs and the pure rap fans like he has don't get me wrong but he didn't get it right away like kendrick did kendrick came in and everyone was like okay this is the guy so we understand why kendrick went after drake it's fairly public knowledge that him and drake haven't been big fans of each other but why would he go after cole many people think that j cole was caught in the crossfire of the diss but j cole and kendrick have actually been throwing subliminals at each other for a while now rap is a very competitive genre and it's no secret that real lyricists want to be the best there is and despite cole and kendrick being good friends years ago there seems to have been some type of animosity between the two artists over the past decade or so. Similar to Kendrick and Drake, Kendrick and Cole used to be good friends in the early 2010s. When J. Cole met Kendrick, he immediately knew he was talented and wanted to sign him. Cole was sending him beats, they collabed here and there, and were even talking about making a collab album. This is something that never happened and many fans speculated up until recently that this collab album would come out. But their friendship, similar to Drake and Kendrick, would turn into more of a rivalry with Kendrick's control verse in 2013. Like I said earlier, he mentioned Cole, but again, he also said that he has love for all these artists. J. Cole has made it very clear that he is a competitive artist and that he sees artists like Kendrick and Drake as his competitors. He even hinted at the fact that it may have, in the past, affected their relationships. Because I think I was so competitive that like, even though we were all friends, I would say we were all friends and friendly. Like I wasn't, uh, I've never been a reach out, you know what I mean? Like I never been a, 
I've never been that person. So it's very likely that this control verse sparked a flame in Cole. Not only that, but Kendrick began winning multiple awards like BETs and Grammys over Cole, along with lists like MTV's Hottest MC list where Kendrick got number one and Cole didn't even make it. These things probably led J. Cole to feel like he was left out of the conversation, and possibly even had him feeling some type of animosity towards Kendrick. Throughout their entire careers, they have been compared to one another, with most people agreeing that Kendrick was the better artist. But despite all of this, they maintained the fact that they were cool. Although, the last time people have seen them together was in 2017. Then, in 2018, Cole decided to shut down the possibility of a collab album with him and Kendrick. As I mentioned earlier though, Kendrick went on a bit of a hiatus for like 5 years, so the thought of the two even having beef wasn't really a discussion. In the interview I played earlier, the one that was released in 2021, Cole said that he had become more focused on building relationships with Kendrick and Drake rather than competing with them. You know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never... I mean, we never kicked it, you know what I mean? Like, we never really even did nothing. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm more interested in the genuine relationship than before I was interested in the competition. And it seems like he was able to build that relationship with Drake. I mean, they're literally on tour right now, but Kendrick seems to be a different story. When Kendrick returned in 2022 with his album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, people speculated that his line on the song, Count Me Out, was directed at Cole. He said, ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And many people know that J. Cole's final album is supposed to be called The Fall Off. A handful of fans have also speculated that Cole has been sending subliminals to Kendrick as well, especially on his song with Benny the Butcher called Johnny P's Caddy. On the song, he said things like, I put your favorite rapper neck in a noose, never letting them loose. I'm probably gonna go to hell if I ask Jesus for a feature. Some see the glass as empty, I see a glass full of ether, collecting his bread in mass like he a Catholic preacher. Some speculated that these lines were targeted at Benny himself but Benny said he didn't think so he thought they were meant for someone else and on my record so you know people ask me about that but mm -hmm. we've been debating about that man like he was talking to somebody man if you yeah, ask yeah, me yeah. Mm -hmm. if you ask me he was talking to somebody yeah I saw folks yes yeah. mm -hmm. I saw folks saying they, they felt like he might have been taking shots at you on his own record I was like nah this led a few people to think he was talking about Kendrick because of the religious imagery in his humble video also Cole said at the end of the song on God the best rapper alive headshot now go and ask the best rappers that died they tell you he never lied this seems like it could be a reference to when kendrick said he's the best alive so great that he died some also interpreted his verse on the secret recipe by yadi to have shots at kendrick too because of lines like people fake progressive and woke i started saying less I had to stop it, peeped how they profit off of racial stress. Studio steppers moving extra on songs, fake and rep. This seems like even more of a Kendrick diss when you think about the fact that Drake called him fake woke as well. With all of this in mind, first person shooter may contain more Kendrick sneak disses from Cole than many thought. Cole said, a lot of people debate in my numeral, not the three, not the two, I'm the UNO. He also said, we the big three like we started a league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali, and Muhammad Ali was nicknamed the greatest. So here Cole is in this song saying that, while these other guys are good, he is still the best. And while many people thought that Cole was just caught in the crossfire between Drake and Kendrick's beef, it seems that Kendrick was a bit more intentional with his diss. Even Kendrick's line, if you walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K, can be interpreted as a diss on Cole since he has a song called Stick where he talks about keeping one with him. Even though Kendrick mostly went after Drake on like that, it seems that he wanted Cole to know that he was the best. This is why Kendrick chose to respond to first person shooter, rather than just dissing Drake like he has been throughout his career. Also, also, I gotta give a huge shout out to What's the Dirt, because he made a really good video on Cole and Kendrick's subliminal beef over the years and had a lot of this information and speculation. He even said that he would bet his whole channel that Kendrick would respond to first person shooter, and he did, which is absolutely crazy. So make sure to check out his video after this one if you want a much more in-depth breakdown on Cole and Kendrick's relationship, with even more evidence that there has been a subliminal battle going on between the two. But this leaves us with one last question. Why would Future and Metro Boomin be okay with such a direct diss on their album all right man look we back sketch pad you know what it is you got rick shine you got sean p hey man what y'all think man i mean who gonna go first because i got a lot to say and not i'll go last or whatever where's sean you can take it man um uh, well uh it's good to be on with y'all again. Um, I got a lot to say on it, but um, you know, it, it's kind of been going on for a while now. 
I mean, the tension's been in the air with really these three. And um, I just think Kendrick just mopped the floor with them again. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's the same energy that Control brought back in 2013. And then Kendrick followed up with uh, the BET Cypher. This is really like the round three, really, if you want to call it rounds. And I just think it just brings to the table how, it, I don't want to say it's a bad look, but it goes to show how like passive aggressive Cole and Drake really are. Because um, Drake, well, we know about him. You know what I mean? Like, but see, the biggest thing is, is like, you can't do this song after this song on Meek Mill, who was in your peer group, and you immediately went after. Then you're going to take, you know, subliminal shots at Pusha T. Okay, you had a, a little back and forth to Pusha T. Pusha T mopped the floor with you. And you've been doing all of these shots of him since then. And then when it comes to Kendrick, you, you kind of want to, you know, shy away. I mean, it's a bad look. It's just a bad look for somebody who claims he's the king. And really, I, I'm glad they pointed out um, those points about Cole, who I almost think is even more passive aggressive because he's basically saying, I don't really want no beef. But it's clear by those bars that uh, that gentleman stated in the video, he, he definitely... Um, is there for the competition and the heat. But uh, since um, Kendrick's verse came out, I mean, he's quiet as a church mouse, really. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and, and you don't have any response from either Cole or Drake yet. You know what I mean? I mean, Drake did something silly at his show. But in the end of the day, um, it, it's kind of making – uh Cole and Drake look like look you just you, you just kind of shine away when a dude been taking direct shots at you for really a decade now you know what I mean so that's really where I stand on it you know what I mean and it's like Cole and Drake where are you at you know it's time to step up if if it's this is really gonna be the Nas and Jay-Z of this era or the 2010s era, it's time to get this show on the road. Let's go. Um, yeah. This guy, Kendrick, is coming at two of the top guys. I don't think we ever seen something like this before. He's usually one-on-one, -on -one, but he's shooting at two... He's shooting at two guys that that can completely end him. You know what I'm saying? Like they can stop him two two on one. And he's letting them know, y'all can't do nothing with me. There's nothing they can do with him. Nothing. And he wins in every category. If you want to talk about lyrics, there's a competition there with him and Cole. We go to old Kendrick, he beats Cole. Hands down. We go back to the heart part one and two, black hippies. Yeah, he gets cold out of here. You know what I'm saying? Him, the song with Rick Ross, uh, the King Kendrick, all that. If we talking about accolades, he's up there with Drake. He has more classic albums than both of them. He has more album of the years than both of them. Drake has more singles, of course, but if we talking about collectively albums he beats both of them if we're talking about conceptually he wins that if we're talking about people who talk about their flaws he wins that you know what i'm saying don't get me wrong drake does talk about his flaws but that's drake's he's he's a emo rapper too but he's more of a he's not it's not the same as kendrick it's kind of like manufactured kendrick's kind of feel real to me you know what i'm saying so at this point, they have to rap. There's nothing you can say. You can't say, well, I sold more than you. That doesn't mean anything to him because he sold platinum records too. You have to rap against him. 
That's it. And I really believe that these dudes are really scared to rap against him. This guy is... I will say this about Kendrick. He's very aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Like, with his with his music. If you go to Mick, Mr. Morale, The Big Steppers, the song that he did, the song before the last song, where he with Pharrell's beat, with the one that sounds like an African beat, uh, I think it's called um, uh, Mr. Morale. And he, bro, the way he raps to that beat, I just don't see them coming close to that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like, he's at this point where, what can you really do with this dude? You have to out rap him. And that's very hard to do. I don't think they, I don't think they can compete. So I think, I think they're going to be quiet for a long time. I don't think they're going to say nothing. They're going to keep on throwing subliminals. I think he's really going to come out with a diss track and he already did, but I think he's going to come out with another one. It's really put, set himself apart from them, but. I just don't see it happening. I don't see them touching that ball. Checkmate. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, uh, beefs, and you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, back and forths, this is definitely reminiscent of a Jay-Z and Nas type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Um you can even take it before that and go back even further to when the OGs used to go at it and throw subliminal shots at each other. You know, LL used to do it a lot. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, and then, you know, of course, cannabis. And then you talk about Kumo. D all, the, all the vets from way back when. Now we get into this point right now, right, where you got – Three of the most elite individuals going at each other's neck. You know what I'm saying? Um, as much as I like Cole, you know what I mean? Like, I Cole is nice. He is fire. But I just don't, because of how Kendrick raps and because of how creative he is and because of how he puts words together and because of how he just... It's so articulate. He paints these pictures. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see him, you know what I'm saying, ending Cole. I I mean, I mean, I just don't see I just don't see Cole ending Kendrick. That's what I mean. Because yeah. it's just it's just it's just so it's, it's he he sets himself apart so much that like you could compare like prime example, right? You could compare Cole's music or Drake's music to anybody in the industry, right? But you can't do that with Kendrick. It's no comparison because he's so articulate and he's so different. You can't make no comparison. You could put every mofo in the industry and say, oh, well, he sounds like this guy, sound, and he don't. But then if you take if you take a Cole or a Drake, you can make comparisons to different artists as far as their catalog, like, oh, well, he kind of did this same thing on here. He kind of did that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, I I don't see, you know, it's going to be entertaining to watch. It's going to be entertaining to listen to. I, I'm waiting for the bars, man. Like, I want to hear something. Like, I want to hear something. You know what I mean? That's that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't know if you guys have paid any any attention but there's other artists that feel some type of way about this whole situation too. Big Sean said something, and I mean I forgot exactly, but he did have like a record or or a verse or yeah. something that he said, and then uh, Styles P said something too. Yeah, out of it, and it was somebody else. <laughs> and it was somebody else. You know what I mean? They get gunned and, down. <laughs> They'll get gunned down. But <laughs> but it, it it was crazy, I man. It's, it's there's a lot of people. Stay, stay out of it. That's all I'm telling them. Stay out of it. Let let them let them boys fight because they tried to do that with control. Everybody wanted to do a control verse. Still didn't do nothing. He did control, bro. I think Kendrick Lamar shifted rap when he did control. Rap was stale. He came back and did this verse, and now rap's exciting again. People are talking again. Yeah. 
Nothing's been Keep the same since I dropped rap. control and tucked mm-hmm. the sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, bro. I mean, the one like, thing that I like about this is that um, um, people stop talking about Sexy Red and Cardi B and Pound Town and that nonsense trash that's out there being pumped down our throats in the mainstream. And we getting back to really who the who is the best MC, and, and that's that's the good thing. Win or lose, or songs, diss records, whatever comes out of this, is we getting back to talking about who's really at the the top of the food chain when it comes to this rap thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think um I think with Kendrick, right? Like, like I love the um the analogy when he did the the Prince and Michael Jackson thing, right? You know what I'm saying? That oh was, yeah, like, that was good. That was fine. You know what I mean? but, but the one problem with, I have with that metaphor was like, all right, if you're supposed to be Prince, you can't just disappear for five years. You know what I mean? Like Prince didn't like Prince was anti industry, anti like big yeah. marketing, but he always gave us music though. He was always making music. He wasn't taking like three, four years like off, like where you didn't just hear nothing at all from Prince. Like he wasn't doing it. He, even if he didn't have any new songs, he was doing tours and shows and you saw him. You saw them out and about. Like we live in an era now where everybody's so um their attention span is so short that you can't be mad when you see Drake getting all these accolades or getting all this attention or whatever, and you ain't putting nothing out, bro. Like we know how good you are. So it was like give us the music because that's where we are now in this in this world, in this, you know, this time point. Like we like we'll listen to your album for like six, seven months. Then it's like, all right, what else you got? You know what I mean? It, it could be a classic, you know what I'm saying? But we'll, we'll still play it, but it's like, now we on to the next thing because somebody else is putting out music. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and it's like you can tell Drake's mm-hmm. sensitive, J. Cole's sensitive, but Kendrick's sensitive too because he's artistic. He wants his props. Like, he wants to be, you know what I mean, a king of, a king of rap. But in this era of rap, you got to keep giving him material. You know what I mean? Like, even like even in Hov's era, Hove gave you like seven mm-hmm. years straight. We gave you an album every year. You think about it. You know what I mean? When he was he was trying he was trying to get the accolades that Kendrick got now. He was just giving you material, material, material. The second thing is that um, you know, if, if they're gonna respond, especially if um J. Cole's gonna respond, he's probably gonna be on his album. Because he's in album making mode. Like he's not just gonna throw a freestyle yeah. out. Like, you know what I mean? It's like there's no point to that, especially when you know, like he's like he just said, like Sean just said a second ago, they got everybody's attention. So how can I capitalize on this from an artistic standpoint? All right, he, he said what he said. I got something for him. When the album come out, he's gonna be on the album somewhere, probably most likely. You know what I mean? To make people go listen to the album. You know what I'm saying? Like now, I think that's a great point. Great. I feel like, I feel like he's such a, a corporate brand now that even if he wants to respond, the people that gave him the four hundred million dollar deal is probably like, yo, don't respond to him, yo. And the reason why we don't want you responding is because he's not signed to the Interscope no more. He's not signed to Sony. He he's doing his own thing. And we don't want him to get that type of marketing and attention. Like it has nothing to do with rap at this point, like with Drake. Like, sadly to say, like because he's so never invested. thought of that, but yeah, yeah he's so right. invested that the big wigs are like, yo, nah. Like now, if he was if he was still signed to somebody over on Universal, or he he went to we went to Warner, was dealing with somebody over there. All right, cool, whatever. But he's independent technically. If you resp- you're the biggest artist in the world, quote unquote, in rap, if you respond to him. How much attention is he going to get from this? How much is that going to affect his next album when it comes out? I'm pretty sure Kendrick's working on an album. That's why he chose to say something now. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? The way he said it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he has an album probably in the chamber he's working on. Like this ain't just like this ain't just something emotional because all three of these guys are very uh very technically sound. They they don't do what Meek Mill do. They don't run to Twitter and just start tweeting. You know what I'm saying? Like all this stuff is tactical. You know what I'm saying? There's a plan of attack. There's a motive behind it other than just be coming at you on some rap stuff because they're still professional recording artists, all of them. You know what I'm saying? That's this is still how they eat for the most part. And I, um, somebody asked me a question like earlier today about it. I never thought about it. And I was like, because I remember I, I said, um, not on here, but I said on a, on another uh, thing, I said that, you know, the, the big labels are trying to get rid of rap as far as it being like the mainstream genre, as far as it being the flagship genre. They're trying to move to something else because of the whole drill thing and how that's affecting the community and everything, and uh, you know, in the country, they trying to even go to Afro beats, or they trying to go to country music, mm-hmm. which is why all of a sudden Beyonce's doing country music because that's the culture. You know what I'm yeah. saying? 
this could be a counter punch to them trying to move rap out the way with maybe these guys doing what they're doing right now because like you, like you guys just said it's bringing hip-hop attention it's gonna be kind of hard to move hip-hop to the shadow and push country or afrobeats in everybody's face when your three biggest artists are now beefing with each other plus you had in future and metro boom and having their issue with 21 savage and all this. so now it's all this drama with all the big top guys in the genre that are they're blatantly saying stuff about each other and people even broke it down to the fact of Drake's last couple albums. If you look at the the, uh, the the names of the albums, and you look at the names of like Futures, like last couple albums, it's almost like they were dissing each other. In yeah, the albums I saw that. The titles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, like it's been some it's been some behind the scenes drama, but I feel like for it to come out now the way it's coming out, it's almost like yeah, this is really convenient that they they trying to move hip hop out the way. And now all of a sudden, y'all beefing. At the, you guys at the highest level beefing it with each other like is it real or is it like you know what i mean are, are, are y'all trying to you know collectively trying to save the genre from getting pushed to the backbone kind of makes you think yeah that, that's a that's a good point man that's a good point uh um as far as what you said about um you said about the prince and michael jackson thing i can understand why he why he used that term um i think the reason why he used that even though Prince did put out music and he did tour, I think Kendrick, if you look at Kendrick's release album releases, even the top artists don't come out when he comes out. Not even, not even Taylor Swift won't even come out when Kendrick drops for some reason. He, he is, he's a, he's a, he's a magnet when it comes to streams and all that stuff. The thing about him is, and what I appreciate about Kendrick is he, he did, Five studio, let's say four, but we're going to say five. Five studio albums. Drake did about 10, I believe, somewhere around there. And he's, mm-hmm. still, he's still right there with him. Even though he come out every five years, he's still relevant for some reason. I don't well, know why know that the is. Reason. We say? You know the reason? Like the, 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 the level of the playing field is weak. You Do you think, he, like, you think like, Kendrick is relevant? Was some, like, it was at least 20 rappers that were legit, like MCs that could kill me. That were like yeah. when we were coming That's up. That's a very good point. Like Twenty dudes, like a kid. Yeah. And like in this industry, in this era, it's probably like five. So when you when so when the field is so weak, you can take a hiatus, and when you come back, that out, is true. Something to say people care because you're a top, you're a top tier player, you're a five star, like a, you know a blue chip. And these yeah, other dudes I mean, are well, two, I guess, two stars. I guess I guess I could I could kind of agree with that, but I also can say that even though that the level playing field the playing field level is weak. The material he puts out is still above great, like it's it's damn near perfect to a to a to an extent. You know what I'm saying? So even if the level playing field is weak, he treats it like it's not. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So Kendrick, even though Kendrick, even though Kendrick can take a five year hiatus and come back, I don't think I don't think a lot of artists can do that. I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't think J Cole could do that. I don't think I actually um. I actually got a counter to that, and I perfectly agree with both of you guys on the, the coming out every five years. I think Kendrick, in in his mind, thinks. See, here's the thing: Kendrick can retire today, and he's automatically top ten all time. I mean, that's solidified. He's he's got a more consistent catalog and got all the accolades close to, I mean, even like an Eminem of all people, you know what I mean? And that, that's a God from another generation. You know what I mean? He's competing. I think Kendrick in his head, this is like playtime for him because he's done everything. He's got every award. He's got every classic. I mean, he's got albums that are going to be up there next to Illmatic and, you know, uh, the purple tea, you know, the classic of classics. So he can afford to come out every five years. He's got that clout. Thing about Drake, why he has to come out every year. So is because people are really overlooking the fact that, well, it's, it's twofold. One, his catalog is extremely mid and he knows it's mid. I think Drake knows that. I think Drake knows creatively 
he's not the album maker that a Kendrick Lamar or the greats of the greats, even the Jay Z's are. So that's why he does that formula because if you forget about the last one not being so good. You know what I mean? You're only going to remember what was last put out. That, I mean, people never talk about that trash techno album you dropped two, two summers ago. You know what I mean? So nobody I talks mean, about my, that my, now. My, 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 thing, my thing with that is like, over here, yeah. I don't think it worked. Because we don't listen to that type of music over here. But I don't think he made it for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's such a worldwide like brand. He's but why he make it? Though. In Brazil. You know what I'm I get, saying? Like, I get that. that but but why Brazil, he make but. it? You know what I mean? You just made it just for fun. He's making this sell records, but but the thing about it is, is like, it's like when you really look at his his catalog, whether it's rap, hip hop, you know, his music, it's it's mid. You know, it's not all that. You know, it's it's singles he wins off of. So that's why he does that formula, and he could do that. You know, Kendrick don't have to do that. That cause he's such a great artist. That's why it's mm -hmm. like, but see. I think on the other end of that spectrum, I think that the hip hop fan, the hip hop fan of 2024, and when I'm talking about the hip hop fan of 2024, I'm talking about like the 30 and under, the 35 and under, the not the mature hip hop fan. They've actually gotten used to a, a mid, um, mid albums or albums having you know, 15 cut albums having five good songs and saying it's good now because like you were saying, you know, the game is so watered down and trash that it's like Kendrick can afford to come out because the playing field is so weak because this fan base now has gotten used to poor quality albums. So Drake can survive in that era. You know what I mean? Now, now to the cold aspect of it, like, it's interesting that you brought up, you know, Cole's probably saving something for his next album because my big question really, and, and I had to think about this is, in all of this, I think Cole has the most pressure on all of him right now because for Cole, this next album is the album. This is supposed to be his to pimp a butterfly. He better deliver on this because all the money is on him. I mean, I think Joe Budden said on his podcast, he's the number one rapper in this game right now. And he ain't dropped an album in like three years. You know what I mean? Off of features. So all the money and pressure is on him. So not only now are you going to have to deliver by far your best album, but now you better respond to Kendrick in some sort of way because that cloud ain't going away. You know what I mean? So I think, Ken, you know, Kendrick kind of put the spotlight on Cole now as to show really how great he is. And that's the real interesting part about it. Um, well, let me ask you guys this real quick. Like, like based off what you just said, right? The pressure, I think the pressure has been on Cole his whole career because when you look at all three of them, he probably yeah. had the least amount of help. Like, granted, that's he true. was signed by Jay-Z. But Jay-Z is not hands-on with his artists the way Kendrick had top dog, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, who are all yeah. big muscle people in the game, and they're like they micromanage you. Whereas Drake had Lil Wayne, Cortez, Baby, and Slim. You know yeah. what I mean? They all micromanage you. You know what I'm saying? Whereas on Drake's side, they let him put out what he wanted to put out because they don't really try to make you make songs that you want. They let you make your own music, and if you believe in it, all right, let's put it on shelf, see what happens. Whereas with Kendrick's side. Top dog and all those dudes, they're real, they really, they really critique the hell out of you. And they won't let you just put anything out. So part of Kendrick's production is based off of how much they micromanage them. Whereas Cole That's had to true. figure this thing out. Like Jay was looking at him like, all right, you better make a hit. Well, how do I do that? He didn't tell him. He didn't give him any type of blueprint. Like he, he's like that coach that puts you on the team and just send you out there and don't give you no plays to run. You just gotta figure out in, in, the, in the course of the game. Because when you look at Jay's past history with all the other people he's ever worked with. Damon and Biggs was doing all the work as far as developing the artist. He was just come and hop on and jump on the same show and help him get their push. He wouldn't actually try to develop them. So it was like the reason why Cole's career might look a little lackluster compared to the other two, he had to figure it out on his own. All he did was get a record deal, and then Jay was like, Oh, yeah, that's my artist. And it was like, That was it. I'm on Rock Nation, but, but I'm not. Like, how and many I'd say in the last. Does he have? I don't, I don't think that. Like one. I don't think that. Um... <laughs> 
Yeah, like that's crazy compared to compared to how many times Dr. Dre's produced a record for Kendrick, compared to how many times Wayne is jumping on a song with Drake. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the fact that Cole's even in this conversation, to me speaks to his greatness as an artist, because he didn't have the OGs to, to kind of hold his hand a little bit or prop him up a little bit. It was just like, go out there and figure this thing out. Or you gonna get dropped on the label. I think but I think this I think like this, this I think this spark this spark for J. Cole just happened within two years though, because before that people were saying he was boring. It was going in on yeah. him. It was clowning him like, oh, this guy again, he's trash. Like he's boring. Like a lot of people was putting him like killing him out there. So I can kinda agree with Joe Buttons when he said that he off of features I mean, but there's other people. I think Lil Wayne Lil Wayne off of features at the time. Them two running I think they about a tie to me. You know what I'm saying? I think Lil Wayne features in the past f- five years and his features in the past five years, like they tip they did like top ten right there, like both of them. But I do believe that J. Cole didn't have a lot of people holding his hand and he did have to figure it out on his own. I mean he's he is his own producer. And he is, and he, you know, he, he, he does his own thing. But even with that being said, I just think artistically, Kendrick just has a different mind than both of them. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, and even if he is being critiqued more, I just think he has a different mind than they, than both of them do. You know what I'm saying? He, to me, he's like, he's like way left and they, they over here, but he's like way to the left. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, but I, I kind of agree you know with that. He definitely has people holding his hand. I got you. You know what the big difference is with that? Because with him, opposed to the other two, he yeah, had his mother and father in the household. We had a lot of culture there. He had a lot of yeah. he had a lot of musical upbringing there. Like, like yeah, he had he had his mom and he had Kenny Kenny Senior. The mother two come from broken homes. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I want to, I want to, um, I want to, uh, also, I want to, um, also put in what, uh, Sean said about the dumbfounded, you know, fans of today who just like, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they can't absorb only but so much. So we all know, right? We all know, you know what I'm saying? When you play them singles for albums, right? They get replayed over and over and over and over again on the radio. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Does those joints get? I don't even listen to the radio no more because I get tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. If I'm not listening to the Spotify or the Apple playlist, you know what I'm saying? I'm riding silent in the whip going to work. That's just what it is because I can't stand hearing the same thing over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Their attention span, their attention span is way below average. You know what I'm saying? They that that's why that's how Drake is getting over. You know what I'm saying? Because like he he understands that the fans of today are just not equipped to have, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of, you know, they're not equipped to have like hear the hear lyrics like that. You know what I'm saying? The hardcore hip hop fans are, but you know what I mean? But like if you if the the younger fans, the ones that are coming up, growing up and listening to listening to these other guys, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe a maybe a handful of them are are are, are equipped to understand because they maybe had somebody in the house that was listening to the to the OGs of the 90s or whatever, but majority of them are not. So you know what I, I mean? So I got yeah. a question for you. So if that's the case, right? How does how does Kendrick Lamar still come out and be relevant within it, within that same within the same question you asked? You saying that the people have short attention span? Why did they listen to Kendrick then? Well, for one, for one, Ken, Kendrick is just a different breed. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like he. He he knows how to captivate the guys, the girls that had a low attention span, and then he knows how to captivate the people with the True. bars and wants to under. He knows how to do both, and that's what makes him great. Like you, you, 
you can't you can't tell me that none of these young people don't know who Kendrick Lamar is. They do. And they know his lyrics and they know everything. He just knows how to he knows how to formulate something to draw the people in. He knows how to relate to everybody. You know what I mean? Like a huh? No, I was gonna say, what was I was you gonna, gonna say? say? You know, you know that people told somebody told me this, and I don't know if maybe if this is a thing. Maybe y'all can tell me. They said that Kendrick Lamar is jazz jazz drill. You ever heard of that? Jazz drill. What's that? <laughs> jazz. Drill? I've never that? heard of that one. That's different. <laughs> like oh, jazz, you mean like jazz? jazz you you mean like mean, jazz music? Jazz. You drill. mean jazz and drill? Music? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't Somebody even know that was yeah. a genre. I learned something new tonight. They said that's yeah. what Kendrick Lamar is. He's jazz drill. I I was like, I, mean, I thought about. it. I said, wait a minute, he might be jazz drill. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, like the, the reduction, <laughs> what they're saying is the reduction mixed with the West Coast LA uh, vibe is what makes it sound that way. Because, you know what I mean? Like, you know, in LA, they, they come up from gang culture. Yeah. Like Kendrick yeah. likes to listen to George Clinton and, and that different form of music that he uses with his production. So I can see how they might try to mix that in there. Because, you know, LA is the land of the G Funk, whatever. But yeah. Kendrick's tapping into other forms of, of music when they sample. So if you're sampling jazz and you're still doing your Kendrick thing over it, yeah, it can come off like that. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. He said mm -hmm. from 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 Dam. The Dam is jazz mm -hmm. drill. And I could kind of see. The thing, like, you said Kendrick cuts through, right? Like people forget mm -hmm. that it's it's 350 million people in this country. You know what I'm saying? And like there's there's a whole age group of people that's our age going up, people that's in their thirties, people in their twenties, people that's in their teens. You know what I'm saying? Like, and ain't none of these, ain't none of these dudes really selling 10 million albums. None of them. So mm -hmm. you can, you can plainly, you can plainly say that n nobody has 10 million people that's listening to them at one time. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, because it will, it will reflect in the numbers. Really, they, they bouncing between like a million to like five or four. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it's like, okay, so let me ask you this. So do you believe that most people stop listening to rap music at a certain point because let's say for example 10 50 cent so what 10 million 11 million is first the uh, get rich or die trying 11 million right yeah 11 million yeah. 11 million but but drake is drake is clearly the biggest artist right now outside of eminem and he he struggles to go sell 2 million albums why do you think that mm -hmm. is do you think people i could answer that streaming, question because of the streaming? I, oh, go ahead. I, I could answer that question. Well, number one, rap is, well, hip hop is like the biggest genre in the world. I mean, Afro beats is slowly becoming the number one, you know, cause back to that, Afro beats and reggaeton are slowly taking that momentum cause of the, the cultural differences across the world. And, but in hip hop, I think that the rap, Hip hop listening audience is so diverse today, but I think that, like, it's so diverse and there's so much hip hop to listen to that, you know, uh, people don't focus in on a certain group of artists like they do. You know, Drake, he wins because of singles. And see, Drake's formula is as long as I got hot singles and hot features out there. I'm gonna get the more streams because what wins in today's culture with the 35 and under, I would say the 30 and under, they listen to songs. They don't listen to albums the way we listen to. Albums are really for the 30 and over, the millennials. You know, um, the millennials and Gen Xers who are used to growing up in the classic area and out listen to an album cut for cut. So really they're like three, four different types of hip hop fans when basically in, in the era we kind of came up in, there was really just one. And there were there were a few outlets to listen to that music as well. Now there's so many. So there's so many diverse options. You know, only people that are really streaming or because of the streams are are, are going diamond and, and what have you are because of singles. That's it. They only, like I only see like diamond singles or five platinum singles. I don't see many albums going past like three million anymore 
because well, people are just that, listening to singles I, now. I, I believe that if you have, let's say, you have ten songs on on a, on an album, mm-hmm. the first ten songs matters. After that, they don't matter. Um, I do believe that one song, it one song. I believe they count if you do I think I think it's thirty seven hundred streams, it's counted as one album sale, even if you swap for one song. So That's right. So if if somebody like Drake puts out hotline bling, his album's gonna go diamond because that song it's like ten billion streams. Wait, exactly right. Exactly you know right. It's like a cheat code. It's like yeah. a cheat code, literally. Yeah, see, and it's based it's based off of um because this is all a uh this is all a, a rerun because when you know the music industry first started in the fifties, that's why that's how they started with just singles. It wasn't a bunch of albums in the fifties. It was they they gave you a, a twelve inch single, they gave you a B side single, and they ran that into the ground to like the sixties when they started actually putting out actual albums. So until we figure out this streaming thing, which um, I mean, I know they were saying um, with ASCAP, well, I went to the last ASCAP meeting, they were talking about how they got a bill, they're trying to get passed into a law where the stream will equal up to a penny at least now, instead of this 0. 0.0003 BS they don't. Because you can't say that my music is worth less than a, a penny. You know what I'm saying? They say, let's at least get it to a penny, which will probably help change the metric on how they want to figure out yeah. how these counted sales. You know what I'm saying? So we're now we're in a renaissance period of there's a new way that music is going to be calculated in terms of when you're selling it as a product. And people have yet to jump into the, the big guys have yet to jump into the um, direct-to-consumer uh, lane, which is what Kanye is just doing now. You just go right to his website and buy his album. Because when you go right to the website and you buy the album from that artist, that's a real album sale because they're selling it to you as an album. But but now mm-hmm. the, the machine is not part of that. That's why they're trying to, that's why we're in this limbo of what counts as an album sell, what doesn't count, because all the big name artists are too scared to sell the shit they sell, hand over fist to their actual fan base. And then the machine is scared of them doing it. So they trying to change these metrics to try to keep you roped in and mm-hmm. not leave it. Because mm-hmm. Drake's formula, all his formula is, is a formula that was created by people behind a desk. And all the new artists that get in the game, they so scared to flop. They just go run to Drake to get a to get a feature. That's why he has all these features. Like he broke the Beatles. That's right. Uh, he broke the Beatles. He broke the Beatles Billboard record for most six singles on a, on Billboard because everybody kept running him for a feature. Because as soon as you get signed, the dude at the label is like, "All right, look, you need to hit me need something that's going to hit the charts." So I don't know what to do with you. We're gonna put you on the back burner. Uh, can we call Drake? Cause he's the number one artist. So that's what everyone was doing. And that's and that's how he got that one metric he got right there, just off of the business side, not even mm-hmm. from like a creative musical standpoint. You know what I mean? Like it's like the game is all like it's, it's so flip and it's so flip floppy and wishy washy that we still trying to figure it out. And that's why I feel like Kendrick doesn't want to be out every single year because this thing is changing every six seven months. So you don't want to get caught in the backdraft of when you put a project out and it gets messed up some type of way because they changing the metrics, they changing the rules. So I think mm-hmm. he takes his time, he sits back, he looks at the landscape. What is going on? Like what are we doing right now? How's everybody moving? You know what I mean? Before he decides to put something out, I won't be surprised if Kendrick decides to go straight to consumer just to show that he really is the megastar that he says he is. Because I'm about to this I album believe, that's I a great body of work. That. You that, can that, buy that. it right from me, right here. He might do that. That's that, that. He might do that. I, 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 I got him doing it. I agree with that. I got a question for y'all. So, what do y'all think about Fat Joe's statement since we're talking about the record labels or whatever? <laughs> Okay. Um, what do you think about Fat Joe's statement when he said that uh, that uh, the record labels are a Ponzi scheme? Um, he said that well, he said are. that. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, there's other there's other people like other artists that had pushback from it, but uh, one one artist that definitely agreed with what Fat Joe said was Cormega. Cormega was like, "Yo, he's mm-hmm. he's 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 speaking he's speaking facts." You know what I mean? Then he started. Bra- I wish I wish I uh, saved what he had said so then I could break it down in detail because I, I just glanced at it. I didn't really dive in and just and read read, but I just took a bits and pieces. But what do y'all think about that? Like, well, is I, I, it... I, I, um, I always been saying this for a long time that it's no point to get signed, especially now. If you can mm-hmm. do it, you can do everything yourself now. 
It's no point to get signed. You can build your own fan base. Look at all these artists that we re- react to. Look at Tom McDonald. Tom McDonald, not signed to nobody. He does everything himself. He had a number mm-hmm. one song on Billboard. Mm-hmm. He makes his own beats. He does his own videos. His girl, his girl records them, and he edits his own videos. And he had a number one song on Billboard. Yeah. <laughs> so it's no point. Like getting signed is just putting you more into debt. That's it. And then they exactly. they, they take your name and they and they they have your name and you can't do nothing. I remember who was and that? I, and unless that? You, you unless you don't own your masters, you know what are you really doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> so at the end of the day, and the only point you get to getting those masters is is if you're like one of the legendary legendary artists like. Uh, a Jay Z or a Kanye or or uh, you know Tony Braxton or whatever years later to go really get the money the 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 full money that you deserve from your record so and we're in the viral age where you could just go viral on YouTube and blow up so you don't need a major label for that you could you could get an independent situation off of that and make more money. Um, and more more bang for your buck, you know, just being independent these days. That's why I think like Kendrick, I don't even think he's gonna try and find a distro deal. Look what uh Kanye did with the Vultures album, you know? That's all him mm-hmm. now. You know, and, and he streamed I think he um he he had how many billion streams or whatever. He had a whole lot of streams, I'll just say that. You know, so he don't even need but I mean Kanye is you know one of the three biggest artists period in the world you got taylor swift drake and then you got kanye west you know what i mean so i mean that may be the exception to the rule but you don't really need a major i'll be right back i'll be right back because yeah like here's the thing though right like about owning your masters i remember um ruby fiasco told this story about how uh he was talking um leo cohen you know i'm saying about trying to get his masters right Leo Cohen was like, what you gonna do with that? What you gonna what you gonna put in a suitcase, carry it around? Like, what you gonna do with your like be pretty much what he meant was like if you don't have no connections to sync licensing and things of that nature, you only your masters ain't doing nothing. Because you're not gonna make no money from it unless you can get it in the movies, TV, commercials, but you gotta know these people and, and put them to wanna sit down with you and do business. And you know what I'm saying? Blackballing is a real thing. You know what I'm saying? If you don't already have the connections before they can try to cut you off. You have a hard time trying to make money off your masters. The thing, the thing, I think the thing that people is messing people up, like because Fat Joe was right, it's a Ponzi scheme, but it's a it's a Ponzi scheme when you walk into the label broke. When you walk in there broke, you're gonna be in debt, yeah, because they gotta get they gotta front you some money to keep you afloat while they while you try to put your album together. The thing that people ain't doing, which surprises the hell out of me, and it's probably one of the biggest one of the biggest fears in our community, is not guns. It's not drugs, it's not gangs, it's not the police. Niggas are scared of banks. You want to really scare a motherfucker? Have them walk in Bank of America, a TD Bank by itself, and something go get a, a, a business loan. Watch how shifty he be. Watch how much he sweats. If you sign to a major label and you got a record deal, let's let mm-hmm. you can tell them, you got to say your record deal is worth 500 mil, uh, half, half a million dollars, right? You can go into a bank and say, "Look, I'm signed to Sony, uh, Sony BMG, half a million dollars. I want to borrow a uh, million dollars from y'all you know, for my next project." They're gonna probably call Sony just to confirm, "Are you actually signed to them?" But like, yeah, that's our artist. What, what is he doing in the bank? Well, he's here to get a business. Oh, okay, they're gonna have to give you. They're gonna give you the money. You know why? Because they know you can recoup. Because you're signed over there. That's a multi-billion dollar company, and you have a half a million dollar deal. So they'll give you a million dollars. So now when you go do your album. Say the label wants to play in your face and they don't want to give you the budget for it. Well, I got my own money over here. I, I got a loan over here. Mm-hmm. So I can go take. So if I need to get, quote unquote, Kendrick on a song, it's going to cost me 700000 Y'all don't want to pay me. I got the money already to pay on myself. Mm-hmm. And what happens is now you got to push my album. It's the same thing. Like people don't realize like 50 Cent, when he did the 50 Cent Kanye West album battle, 50 did that on purpose because. Jimmy I leaning in them was trying to play with him in terms of his marketing money. The man, like you, like you said, the man sold 11 million his first album. He sold like 6 million the second one. Why would you not give me the money I need for my third album? 
because they was kind of because they was kind of getting stale with them. So 50 Cell, I got something for y'all. Y'all don't want to give me the bread. I'm a creator. I'm a creator reason why you have to push my album. I'm gonna say my album's better than his. And if he beats me, I'm gonna quit. Da, da, da. So now I, I created a rift between Rockefeller and Aftermath. So uh um Universal's two big companies, Interscope and uh and um Dev Jam along with Rock with Rockefeller. So now you have to now push my album like it's the best thing selling because you don't want to lose because you want to save face because you know uh, uh um Lucian over there with Babe with Bird um Lucian Lucian and um Jay Z and Dame Dash over there talking shit to Jimmy and uh, and uh, Dr. Dre you know Kanye gonna beat him you know he's gonna beat him they like nah we can't let this happen we're gonna have to push this album out mm-hmm. like Fifty was a genius for doing that and that had nothing to do about him and Kanye he was trying to make sure his album got pushed so the problem that people are having reason why they're going to these labels and they getting the ass kicked because they're not business savvy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and these mm-hmm. labels know that. That's why they signed these kids at 18, 17, 19. They don't know nothing. That's true. That's true. You know true. what I'm saying? Like, that's like, true. Like, they're taking like, advantage like, of the Russ, vulnerable. That's what they're doing. Yeah, like Russ talks about this stuff all the time. Like, yeah, you don't, like, you can't do everything yourself. The problem is how are you going to market it to get the get the stuff that you need, to get the response you need. Because you can make, because if you're working for, if you're trying to work for a viral moment, you already moving with the wrong energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you're better off getting the funding you need to do what you want to do to get the eyes you need on your project. But people are scared to walk in the bank to ask for that type of money because they really don't believe in themselves. So you got more people trying to go viral doing stunts than just doing better business. Mm-hmm. Because you are a business. You're a brand, like, at this point, when you're independent. And what, what brand you know takes off without marketing dollars behind it? Done. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. None. Like Kendrick at this point, he don't, like I said, he he independent because he don't need nobody because he is him. He could go right to Bank of America like, look, I need 25 million from y'all. Well, how much is Kendrick Lamar worth? He's probably worth about 80, 90 million, whatever. They're going to give him that money for that project. He can get all the way. He'll look like a major label artist still because he went and got his own bread to put behind his project. And if he does direct to consumer, he's going to recoup all of that. Because what, what Kanye made like $20 million off of, uh, Selling two million copies of, of vultures right from his website. Yeah, I think he made like twenty. I think he made like twenty million off of that. Like, like that's probably the most money he's ever made off an album. And you, we can think about all the classes he had. He did. He didn't come home with twenty million. It was mad mm-hmm. hands in that pot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why they really mad at Kanye now because he's showing everybody like, yo, when you on at a certain level, what? Why? Why do you need a record label? Like, I can make way more money going gold. Than I ever did going three times platinum when I was signed over here because I don't got five people taking the money out of it before I even get my first check. It's independent money. I got to pay over saying it is because I'm in a 49 percent tax bracket now. Yeah, that's true, man. Nah, you, you that's you spend some facts right there. <laughs> definitely spend some facts. That like, definitely, uh, I definitely believe that the move is and always will be now is to be independent try to be independent look at all these like look at all those those the the street rappers i mean they they not as big as kendrick but ransom to fee lord to to 38 special all of them look at look at look what the movement they got you know what i'm saying like they doing their own thing so I, I i i get what you're saying i get what you're saying so i don't know but yeah man we gonna end this young um thanks for having y'all on my fellas man appreciate y'all man you know what i'm saying appreciate y'all for having wow, great conversation guys yeah yeah absolutely hey uh why don't you guys leave your handles and stuff like that so people could get in contact with you and check out your stuff i mean your content all great, right man. um i'm on I, I gotta remember it off the top of my head but uh um hip hop round table reviews um on YouTube. Just go look look me up. Um like, share, subscribe. I I review hip hop music, you know, current, old. I grade them on a uh one to ten point scale. Um and I also, you know, do some hip hop topics like who's better than who. I did something on the Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J. Cole. Um uh uh, B50 will. So, um, definitely check that out. Um, I'm trying to get more content on there as, as, as much as I can, but, um, uh, 
check out Hip Hop Roundtable reviews uh, on YouTube. Yeah, um, you can catch me out at um, rickshawn.com. That's uh, R-I-C-K-S-H-O-N.com. That'll take you to the Instagram, It'll take you to the YouTube, my link tree. I got like uh, five instrumental albums out right now, three singles out right now. You can get everything you need on me at rickshawn.com. R-I-C-K-S-H-O-N dot com. All right, man. All right, man. Thanks, y'all, for coming on, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, fellas.